Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. I've got a great lesson for you that's going to help you improve your timing. Now, time's always been a bit of a kind of a thing for me. It's uh, something I've always concentrated on, and I never kind of felt like my time was that good. You know, I always had to really concentrate to lock in on stuff. And uh, a few years ago, now I decided I was going to really try and explore how this. You know how this worked, and exercises that I could do to try and uh, you know improve my own time,、uh, particularly with a metronome and, and locking into a groove. And、uh, one of the exercises that I kind of found slash discovered was、uh, playing with the metronome, but just playing a clicking sound. Now, this is a really, really unusual kind of exercise. A lot of, it's one of those ones that you're going to go through different stages of. So I'm going to warn you in advance. When I show you this exercise, your first reaction is going to be. That's so easy. I can do that already. That's no problem. Okay, so、uh, it's true that playing even eighth notes on a clicked, muted note at 60 beats per minute is easy. Most beginner guitar players will be able to do it. But what you're going to discover is there's different levels of doing this. So the first thing is to be able to do it. Okay, so、uh, I've got a metronome here. Any old metronome will do.、Uh, if you haven't checked it out, I'll mention that I've got a the Justin Guitar Time Trainer metronome, which is a app for、uh, iOS and Android.、Uh, you might want to check it out. It's got other useful training modes that we don't need right now. Actually, any metronome、uh, will suffice for this particular exercise. So you want that set for 60 beats a minute. And you're just going to rest all your fingers on the strings. I tend to do it on the fourth string, but it doesn't really matter which、uh, string you want to do it on. And、uh, then you're just going to play eighth notes. So usually you start just playing with the beat, just using down picks. So you just be going, and then add eighth notes. Pretty easy, huh? Yeah, it's really easy. No problem there at all. I can do that. Here's where it gets really fun. So the first three or four times you do it, I don't recommend you do this more than five minutes, right? Because you'll probably go a little bit crazy. So five minutes, either on a timer or the timer built into the Time Trainer app or whatever, you know.、Uh, but just five minutes. Put it on, and just play eighth notes on the muted note. Don't, it's, it's really important that you learn to concentrate, not kind of veer off into doing sort of you know fancier rhythms or trying to add notes into it or playing scales or whatever. You just want the little clicky note, and you just want to really concentrate. I always close my eyes when I'm doing it. Really kind of helps concentrate on just the sound. And the first few times you do it, you'll probably just feel a bit bored, and concentrating will be the hardest thing that you have to kind of worry about is just making sure that you stay with it. But what you're going to find after you go through the point where you can just do it, then you start noticing exactly how you're sitting with the metronome. You know, are you exactly with the metronome, or are you a little bit early or a little bit late, right? Because that's actually what the the tricky part is: is being exactly synced up with the metronome and not being a little early or a bit a little late. You know, there's this thing drummers have called a flam, right? Which is、uh, where you have one note quickly followed by another note. If I just use my legs like a A letter, a letter, where you just—they're not—they're supposed to be almost at the same time, kind of thing. But you just can hear the difference between those two notes not quite happening, and that's what a lot of people have when they're doing this exercise. They'll be playing their click note not exactly with the metronome, and you'll get this—you'll hear the metronome in the note slightly differently, and 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 that ain't right. It's got to be exactly, exactly with the metronome, right? Now, once you get through that. And you've been practicing it for most people, most students that I've given this exercise to. It's maybe it's been a month before they really feel like they're syncing with it. Okay, and once you can do that, a really interesting thing happens, which is the metronome disappears. Because if you're playing exactly with the metronome, exactly with the metronome, you don't hear the metronome. It's a really amazing thing. The first time it happened for me, I, I kept on looking at the metronome to check that it was still working. It hadn't magically stopped. And as soon as I did that and lost my concentration, I heard the metronome again. It was like, oh, it is still there. And then I'd be concentrating on it again and just playing, and it'd disappear again. And now that's what I'm looking for. If I can, I try and go for you know 30 seconds at a time without really hearing the metronome. Very rarely do I get longer than 30 seconds or more. You know, I'd, I'd like to be able to do it for a whole five minutes, but that hasn't happened yet. I'm still working on.、It. Right? So, but if you just sit in there, and it is literally just that. You put the metronome on. Now,、I'm, actually, I should explain that as well. The volume. If you're 
guitar is really loud and you can't hear the metronome, that's no good. Okay? What you want to do is you want to try and find that little point where you can hear the metronome and the guitar, but that if you're exactly synced up right, that the, the guitar is loud enough to conquer the metronome. Okay? That might take a little bit of experimenting, right? I know for me with the, my kind of standard amp settings of my guitar and about seven or eight, which is why I'm kind of looking down here, uh, that's about the right volume to, to beat my iPhone metronome. Okay, but different metronomes, different volumes, if you have to experiment a little bit. Um, with acoustic guitar, you'll probably find that uh, putting the metronome like up on the top of the guitar, which is where I recommend people put it usually when they really need to hear the metronome, might be a bit loud. So generally like this, I'm just putting it down on my lap. You know, that's a good place to be putting the metronome to try and get that, uh, you know, to be able to conquer it eventually with the sound. But you still need to be really clear on it, right? So... If I just put it back on again, I'm doing 60 beats a minute. That's a good kind of point to start off there, 60 beats a minute. So just start playing down strokes with the metronome, and that's it. Okay, that's often enough for people, and you can find that you get rid of the metronome. Definitely goes away as soon as I start talking or thinking about the teaching stuff. It's not as good. But once you kind of hit with that, introduce that upstroke as well. Down, down. That's gone. Ah, just come back. So really great exercise. And you, I tell you, you'll be amazed at what a difference it does to your timekeeping ability. And it'll make it so when you're playing scales with the metronome or doing an exercise, anything with the metronome, it, it, it's a whole new level of, of listening. And what I also found is that after I got used to the idea that uh, I could play exactly with it and the metronome would disappear, I've started experimenting a little bit with playing slightly ahead, so, so slightly earlier than the metronome and slightly later than the metronome. Because if you play slightly early, feels a little bit more kind of rushed. It feels like it's kind of moving, like it's a bit angrier or it's got more energy. And when you play kind of slightly after the metronome, it sounds a little bit kind of lazy and a little bit looser, you know. So, and that's something that, that can be very musical because music isn't about playing exactly with the metronome all the time. It's about that feel and making things feel nice, you know. And, and that's really important. But I still hold that my time and my feel and my being able to make things feel good is better for having worked on my time being able to play it exactly with the metronome. It really is a, this is a super exercise and not one that I'm going to be stopping practicing very soon and uh, often I'll do my little kind of ear training uh, exercise first, just at playing melodies, I think I mentioned that in an earlier lesson, uh, and then this will often be the second exercise I do because I really feel it kind of, it helps tune me into my time and, and, and you know, that's a really important part of practice for, for me and it should be for you too. So uh, I hope you like that exercise and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Take care of yourselves, bye bye.